Thank you very much for, for taking the time to, to listen in. Uh, I'd just like to speak to you about uh, inflection resources. And uh, as uh, Gilbert mentioned, uh, we are uh, exploring Eastern Australia for gold and, and copper gold. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, this morning. I will be making a lot of forward-looking statements. This is an exploration story after all, and uh, I will be making those, so please be aware of that. So what are we doing? So we're exploring Australia, and Australia is very much a uh, mining-friendly premier jurisdiction. It's uh, a very important component of the Australian economy. It's very pro-mining and uh, very welcoming of, uh, of investments and very supportive of, of the business. We're targeting very large copper gold systems in New South Wales and gold deposits in Queensland. And the, one of the key takeaways for this, this uh, presentation is the scale of the targets in which we're exploring for. We really are exploring for giant uh, copper gold deposits, particularly in New South Wales. I'll talk a little bit about the strategy of how we're doing this. And we believe we have a fairly innovative uh, method of doing this and a very cost-effective way of exploring. I'll talk a little bit about the team and who's involved. And then the other thing I would like to stress is the, the assets we have in New South Wales are all 100% owned. So this is quite an unusual point. Uh, a lot of uh, projects you'll, you'll hear about are invariably owned by third parties and they have option agreements and things like this to, to earn an interest. But we have 100% ownership of the project. So it's a very clean, simple story in that respect. And then I'll also talk a little bit about the shareholder base and, and our big shareholders and who have been supporting the, uh, the company from day one. But I'd really just uh, set the scene a little bit as to where we're exploring. So I'm really going to talk about our New South Wales projects um, for the most part. And we're located about four or five hours drive uh, west of Sydney. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about our Karen project up in northern Queensland. And there we're about a five hour drive west of the uh, city of Cairns. In terms of our, our corporate structure, uh, we've been very lucky to attract strong institutional investors. Uh, we were able to attract uh, resource capital funds. This is a very large uh, Denver-based institution that specializes in mining exploration. And they're our biggest shareholder, of having nearly 20% nearly of, of the company. We're also able to attract a group called Crescat out of, uh, out of Colorado as well, as well as Sprott and Dundee, our, our key shareholders of the group. Other key point here is uh, the management and insiders. We own about a third of the company. So the stock is very tightly held and we're very massively incentivized to, uh, to succeed uh, along with our, our co-investors here. But uh, we're listed in Canada on the CSE and we're also listed uh, in the United States as well. I'll talk a little bit about the people. I won't go through everybody in this period of time, but we've got a very well-balanced board. Uh, I'll just mention our, our chairman was the former uh, mining analyst for, for Canaccord, uh, Wendell Zerb, and prior to that, uh, Pacific International. Uh, my, myself, uh, Alistair Waddell, uh, I'm the president and CEO of the company. I've been in the exploration business my entire career, about half with the major miners and half on the junior side of, of the business as well. So very, very well experienced in, in that side of the business. Um, I've also mentioned Stuart Smith there, one of our non-executive directors. Uh, Stuart is a highly experienced geologist who was the former specialist for uh, tech. He was the uh, specialist for all things copper related at uh, tech, very uh, seasoned exploration geologist uh, based in, in New South Wales. But we've got a nice balanced board of, uh, of commercial, technical, and, uh, and sort of the, the financial aspects as well. A couple of other people I will mention. In fact, the key person I mentioned here is uh, Dr. Douglas Haynes. Uh, Douglas Haynes was the originator of the idea that ultimately became inflection resources. And uh, Douglas is a very famous geologist in, in Australia. He was the former chief geologist for a very iconic and successful mining company called Western Mining Corporation, or WMC. And WMC went on to make a number of very big discoveries throughout Australia. Uh, during the uh, mostly during the 90s, but Douglas was involved with the discovery of a very big uh, uh, copper gold uranium deposit called Olympic Dam, or more recently, uh, it was involved in the discovery of the big Kamoa deposit. This is uh, a deposit owned by um, uh, Robert Freeland in, in the DRC. 
So we're very happy to have uh, Douglas involved, but uh, we've also got some other individuals, Alan Wilson, Josh Phillips, Mark Dugmore, et cetera. Again, very experienced, uh, very well-respected jollies. So it's a very technically driven uh, exploration company. So what are, what are we doing uh, in, in Australia? We're a little Canadian company here. We're exploring belt of rocks called Macquarie Arc. And the key point here is this big belt of volcanic rocks hosts some of Australia's biggest mines. And in fact, the Cadia Ridgeway operation is the largest gold mine in uh, Australia. This is the, the flagship operation of Newcrest Mining. But we also have um, uh, the North Parks Mine. This is a, a, a Chinese-owned operation uh, owned by China Molly in a joint venture with uh, Sumitomo. This is a big underground copper mine. And then we have our ground to the north there. So this map you can see on the screen here, these black outlines represent our exploration licenses. And the key point to note here is this orange unit. So this is a sedimentary sequence sitting on top of the volcanic rocks, which hosts these big mines. So we're exploring the covered extension of this big belt of rocks that hosts all these big mines to the south. So that was the opportunity that we recognized, that Douglas Haynes recognized, is, uh, is exploring for these deposits. And it's really just a case of how, how we get there. Just get a quick map of just give you a sense of our, the scale of inflections land position in New South Wales. Uh, we are in fact the biggest holders of exploration licenses in, in the state. And this is quite, uh, it's quite something. These are all 100% owned. These are, are claims we've actually staked and acquired ourselves, um, but we're in, in good company. Some of the world's biggest mining companies are in, in this belt of rocks. We have Rio Tinto, we have BHP, we have Tech. Newmont, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of big companies here exploring for the very targets, in fact, that we are, are indeed looking for. I've just got this slide in here to give you a sense of the type of terrain we're dealing with. I mentioned this northern part of the belt, which we're exploring, is covered with sediments. And it's, this is a big agricultural part of New South Wales. This is where they grow grain and cotton and canola and things like this. But as you can see from the photograph, it's very flat terrain. It's a very simple place to explore. There's a network of roads and, and power lines and, and whatnot. So you can pretty much just drive anywhere. So we're not dealing with seasonality and things like snow and, and massive mountains or, or infrastructure challenges. It's very simple exploration. And what this really translates to is very, it's very cost-effective exploration. You get a lot of good value for your uh, your dollars in terms of getting money into the ground. The key image here, um, it really explains the opportunity and, and I won't go into a massive amount of detail here, but we've got two maps side by side, which are exactly the same scale, just showing different things. On the left-hand side of the screen, we have a very simple geological map showing in dark gray, the key volcanic units that host these big mines, all those, yellow spots represent documented gold occurrences, and the orange stripe unit represents a sedimentary cover sitting on top of those favorable uh, volcanic rocks. So it's masking what, what's going on underneath. And that was the challenge. But what really started this was Dr. Douglas Haynes analyzed uh, a geophysical survey, which you can see on the right-hand side of the screen. And this was a survey flown by the government of New South Wales to encourage investment in mining and exploration uh, in, in the States. And he took this uh, geophysical map and essentially extrapolated the known geology to, located in the South all the way under the cover. And he built a beautiful geological map and critically he identified uh, at the time 30 targets that he considered a very similar or analogous to the major deposits um, uh, located further to the south. So these are distinctive features in the, in the geophysical or the magnetic map you can see on the screen. And these were sitting on open tenement free, exploration free uh, ground. So we claimed all of these exploration licenses and uh, now we're systematically exploring them. And we're doing this by drilling holes through the sedimentary cover and doing uh, little holes into the, the bedrock. So we drill down through the sediments very cheaply. We do short drill holes into the bedrock. We then uh, do multiple short holes, looking for the footprint of these big copper gold systems. So these are big bulk mineable uh, copper gold systems and they are big alteration halos broadly in a concentric manner 
outboard of the, the mineralization. So we drill the targets through the cover, we prick the bedrock, and we need to see either favorable alteration or mineralization. If we drop them, when we walk on and, and move on to the next target. So it's a little bit of a probabilistic exercise. There's a large number of targets. We believe that's important. And we're systematically working through these targets right now. And the map on the right-hand side of the screen is sort of a state of the union sort of map. All those icons of different colors represents the different stages. So the ones in red have come back with favorable alteration and mineralization. The ones in yellow have come back with things we need to come back and understand a little bit more. The ones in green are remain to be tested. So we've got a large portfolio of targets. We've given ourselves multiple chances of success. But the key here is the scale of the targets of which we're exploring. These are big, big features we're drilling. And this is just very briefly a, a more zoomed in version of the magnetic map to give you a sense of the scale. So is it sort of two, two kilometers across these individual targets? These are big, big features that we're identifying in the magnetics. And we're just, just throwing this on here to give you a flavor of the types of rocks in which we're hitting. So these, I won't get into the details, but we're hit, we are hitting mineralization. We're hitting fable alteration. We've got a lot of smoke to say, yes, we're on the right track. We're hitting the right rocks at the right age. Uh, we just need to keep systematically stepping out till we drill into the top of one of these systems. But we're very encouraged with what we're seeing. And uh, we think there's a very real chance here of drilling into a, a very large, uh, as yet to be discovered, uh, copper gold system. Moving on, just to finish off here, I'm going to go up to far north Queensland. So we're up in far northern Australia. So we've got Cairns on the coast here. So we're about a five hour drive west of, of Cairns, about 500 kilometers. This is our, our Karen Gold project. So this is adjacent to a historic gold mining district called the Croydon Goldfields. And Croydon was known for very, very high grade uh, veins, quartz veins with gold, with gold grades around about an ounce of gold. So these are incredibly rich, incredibly high grade gold values. And um, the, the Croydon Goldfield was essentially mined out uh, by old timers in the early 1900s. So it was a very historic, very rich mining district, uh, which we came up with a unique idea to explore. And on the screen here, we have a simple geological map. So in the, in the bottom half of the screen here, all those yellow spots represent known uh, gold working. So that the whole area is covered with uh, historic gold mines. And what you're looking here, this pale, sort of cream yellow color is the sedimentary sequence coming on top of the mineralized rocks. So these, these big quartz veins disappear under young sedimentary sequence. So it's been massive, you can't see anything. And what we did, we looked at the regional magnetics in this case in, in, in Northern Queensland. And what we recognize that directly on, on trend from these, these high grade veins, is there's a, a whole series of features identifiable in the regional magnetics, which we consider analogous or very similar to the Croydon Goldfields located to the south. If we were to find the Croydon, Croydon Goldfields today, it'd be a spectacular high grade district. But uh, this area here to the north has never been drilled before. And we have about 30 kilometers from north to south, a very distinct, features we consider comparable to the Croydon Goldfield. So it's a spectacular high grade exploration uh, target, uh, which is really, uh, we've only really just started to explore. So the, the prize here will be discover another, another Croydon Goldfields as we see further to the south. And uh, on the next image, I'll just get into a little bit more detail. And uh, this just gives you a flavor of, of the type of uh, image you're seeing. So each of these, Purple zones represents a target area that we're interested in. This, we believe, represents uh, magnetic lows. And these magnetic lows, we interpret, represent uh, sort of alteration associated with the Croydon gold field. So it's a, it's a very large 30 kilometer long zone with multiple drill targets. And as I say, the prize is some very high grade uh, gold. So really, just to wrap up here, um, if I could just summarize uh, the company, I mean, obviously, Australia is a fabulous uh, mining jurisdiction. It is a jurisdiction where ultimately the major miners want to own and develop and build mines. It's uh, very welcoming for, for investment. We're targeting very, very large copper gold deposits in New South Wales. This is an important point, the scale 
of the targets which we're exploring for. We're not looking for something tiny. We're looking for something very, very large. And in Queensland, we're looking for very high grade gold. And we certainly believe we've got a, we've got a great strategy and a great team to, to exploit that. And they've been seriously successful at finding big mines before. Other key point here, 100% ownership. So a very simple, clean story in that respect. Uh, the company owns 100% of the assets in New South Wales. And we're aggressively drilling. We've been aggressively drilling for months now. So it's, uh, it's been an ongoing story for a long time. And uh, we're super excited in terms of the way we've, the company's progressed and uh, what we're seeing with the drill bit. But uh, with that, uh, I will wrap it up and uh, I'll take any, any questions there, Gilbert. Thank you, Alistair. Uh, the first question coming from Toby is that, will you list your company on the Australian Stock Exchange? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. It's a question we get, get quite a lot. It is something we look at on a fairly regular basis. Uh, obviously, there would be advantages to that. Uh, but to be frank, our, our shareholder base is in North America, particularly in Canada. And um, we have not got many Australian shareholders. So what we've always said is if, if, we, if when we make a discovery, uh, that would be the time to, to do an ASX listing. But to do an ASX listing, it probably takes six months and costs about half a million dollars. And we believe that, that, that those funds would better use into drilling holes and, and making that discovery. So it's, it's an ongoing discussion, but at this time, no. This question coming from Keegan is that, uh, can you tell us any promising projects nearby in the region, like your, your peers as, as well? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, aside from the very big mines, obviously Australia's biggest gold mine in Cato is located just to the south of us. We have the North Parks uh, mine, which is owned by, by China, Mali, and Sumitomo. Evolution Mining, Australia's second biggest gold miner, who, who recently bought Red Lake here in Canada, uh, owns the Lake Cowell, or Cowell operation, just located to the south of us as well. So those are the three big mines. There's a number of other smaller mines as well in the belt, as well as uh, there's a company called Alkane Resources, which is located, uh, listed, so to say, on the ASX. And they have a project called Bodder. And uh, they, um, they drilled a, a porphyry target. Uh, it's going back a few years now, uh, about four years ago. They drilled a project there, which intercepted a very broad, uh, extensive uh, interval of, of low-grade copper and gold over about 500 meters. And uh, at that time, the company went from about a $50 million valuation to over $500 million valuation. So... The market is receptive to these uh, these types of discoveries, but there's there's a lot going on, particularly to the south. I mean, to the south of us, uh, the the terrain is very competitive. The claims uh, it's very much like you would see in British Columbia or in Ontario, where you know people are, are very tightly packed in each other. But we've we believe having that northern extension of the belt completely to ourselves gives us a, a massive uh, competitive advantage. Let's squeeze in one last question here from Anne. Will you welcome any Asian strategic investors? Absolutely. Absolutely. We already have some, some Asian investors and um, I'm, I'm very happy to, to chat to anybody. We're, um, you know, we're easily accessible. Um, you can find us on our website, inflectionresources.com, and uh, all of our contact details are there. But be very happy to chat to anybody in that respect. Great. Thank you, Alistair, for being here with us here today. No, thank you very much for your time. And uh, thank you, everybody, for, uh, for taking the time to listen.